you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. Our first step in solving this question is to use the conservation of energy to find the final speed of the steel ball as it swings its way downward. We know that initially the only energy present is the gravitational potential energy equal to mgh. The ball then swings down and that energy is converted into kinetic energy which of course is equal to one half mv squared. So we can use the conservation of energy by setting those two energies equal to one another and solving for the final velocity of the ball. The mass appears on both sides of this equation so it can be divided out. We could then multiply both sides of the equation by two and then take the square root of both sides. Notice that the height h would simply be the length of the string which is given to us in the question as being 70 centimeters. We'll have to make sure to convert that to meters, of course, by multiplying by 10 to the minus 2. So we'll go ahead and plug in the known value. And we can see that the final speed of the ball is equal to approximately 3.7 meters per second. Notice we haven't incorporated the block yet. We're only focused on the ball. But in the next phase of the problem, we're going to take a look at the collision between the steel ball and the block. So in the next phase of the problem, we're going to use the conservation of momentum to calculate the final speeds of both objects. We've labeled those objects as M1 and M2. M1 is for the steel ball, M2 is for the block. Notice that the 3.7 meters per second that we calculated earlier in the problem is now going to serve as the initial velocity of the steel ball. The initial velocity of the block is actually zero. And so it turns out that in this situation, when we have a so-called stationary target, that is, the second object is at rest initially. There are two equations that we can use to calculate the final speeds. Again, this will only work if the second object is initially stationary. So let's take a look at those two equations. So in the first equation, we can calculate the final velocity of object one. And then in the second equation, we can calculate the final velocity of object two. Notice again that these are only going to work when the second object, the target, so to speak, is stationary. So we'll go ahead and use the first equation to solve for the final velocity of object one, and we'll be plugging in the initial velocity of object one that we found earlier, as well as the masses. So there we went ahead and plugged in all the known values. When we calculate that, we get a final velocity for the steel ball, or object one, of negative 2.47 meters per second. Notice the negative sign indicates that the steel ball after the collision has rebounded and is now traveling to the left. We'll bring back the second equation and calculate the final velocity for object two by plugging in the known masses and once again the initial velocity of object one. So the known values have been plugged in and the final velocity for object two turns out to be positive 1.23 meters per second. Positive indicates that the block is moving to the right after the collision. So those two equations are nice. Again, only use them when the second object or the target is initially at rest. And also it should be noted those will work when the collision is elastic. You wouldn't want to use those two equations if it was an inelastic collision. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel and click the thumbs up icon. Also, you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.